Well, uh, happy Father's Day, and uh, I hope that all of our dads are honored in some ways uh, today. When I think about my dad, I think about the influence he had uh, and he continues to have in my life. Uh, he has, you know, who I am today is really uh, a product of, of the people who I spent my most formative time with, including, and most importantly, my parents and my dad. Uh, my dad taught me a whole lot, and if you knew my dad, you might actually be able to say, well, okay, now I understand a little more about you, right? I mean, we all, you know, the people in our lives who've, you know, had that kind of impact on us, they change us, they, they affect us, and they uh, have influence over us. But what we've been looking at over the last little while is that we've been realizing that we all have influence. In fact, Jesus said that if we've chosen to follow him, he calls us salt and light. He uses these incredible metaphors to remind us that we are to have influence where we are. It doesn't matter if you're in grade four or if you are in a, a retirement home, you all have an opportunity to have influence on the people that are around you. And whether we like it or not, whether we know it or not, uh, we have this impact and we were created to be in community. And that's why we come together on Sunday mornings. That's part of the reason why we come together is to encourage each other. The book of Hebrews says that, that uh, we are not to give up meeting together, but instead we're to encourage each other more and more and more. And the best way that we can do that, the best way that we can encourage each other is by telling stories. By telling our stories. And we hope as a church, as we move into this new year, that we're going to become even better storytellers letting you know the kinds of things that have been going on in our lives. And we've already heard some stories from Mark. We've heard uh, an email from Wes. And we're going to hear some incredible stories as we uh, approach baptism and we witness these baptisms together, which is something that we're so excited about. And stories are powerful because we are a storytelling people. We love stories. And, and I think it's really simple. The reason we love stories is because stories help our lives make sense. Stories help our lives makes sense. They put events in order and they give meaning to things. If you think about it, without a bigger story, our lives are just a collection of a whole bunch of different details, events, circumstances, things that happen in our life. But if I were to, you know, but what, we don't think that way, right? If I were to look back in my life, what I do is I start to, to, to kind of connect some of those stories and we put them in an order so they start to tell something. They begin to have meaning and they provide meaning. But if I was going to tell you about you know, how I met my wife, for instance, I would choose certain parts of my experiences to sort of shape together a story. If I was to tell you how I am, who I am, or, or who I am today, or how I became the person I am today, I would pick different stories, and I would collect them together. You see, we are a storytelling people, and we use these stories to provide meaning and to provide a, a kind of a context for our history and for the things that are going on. Stories help our lives make sense. And so if you have your Bibles with you this morning, I want you to turn with me to Psalm 78. And we're going to look here just briefly this morning, and we're going to, I'm going to get out of the way, and we're going to hear some more incredible stories of God's activity as we uh, experience these baptisms together. But this book, I mean, this Bible is one big story from cover to cover. We have this incredible unfolding story of what God is doing in the world. And, and it helps us understand who God is, and it helps us understand who we are, and it helps us understand how we are to live in the world that God has us. And so, so this, this story, I mean, this is why we, we kind of skip through the, the lists in the Bible, and we get kind of bored when we start looking through all of the different instructions that God gave to his people. And we start perking up when we hear the stories, don't we? But those stories all point to something bigger that's going on. I want to read to you from Psalm 78. This is the second largest psalm in, our, in the book, in the Bible. And um, starting in verse 1, here's what it says. My people hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. In other words, he's going to tell a story that means something. So pay attention. He says, I will utter uh, hidden things, things from old, things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from our descendants we will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he's done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children. So the next generation would know him. Even the children yet to be born would know him. And in turn, they would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and they would not forget his deeds, but they would keep his commandments. They would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation, whose hearts were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to him. And then he goes on, and I'm not going to read the whole psalm this morning, 
But what you see as what unfolds next is the story of God's people from the very beginning. It's an explanation of how God intervened and brought them out of slavery and took them across the Red Sea and gathered them together and taught them the laws and, he, and how he brought kings and brought leaders. And, and this incredible story of God acting is all included in, this chap, in the rest of this chapter 70 or verse 70 or chapter 78. And the author shares this incredible story because stories help make sense of our lives. They help put things in order. And you may be thinking this morning, you know, I'm in the middle of something and it's confusing or maybe it's painful or maybe it's hard or whatever it is, but sometimes we're in the middle of it. It's hard for us to get some perspective and to see our way through. But when we know that we all share a bigger story, we start to get a clear picture of what God is doing and how we've been shaped in the process. You see, being great storytellers is really important in any relationship that we have. It's, it's incredibly important right here in this place, in our church, as we share, even when we sing songs, we're telling stories to each other. We're, we're sharing the incredible ways that God has been acting in the world. And when we share our stories with each other, it's encouraging and it's strengthening and we need to be great storytellers. And the question is, you know, how do we become great storytellers? And I just want to look at three very quick things that, that, that really help us become the most effective storytellers that we can be. And the first one, you can see it in verse 4, it's tell God's story, not yours. In verse 4, it says, we'll tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power, and the wonders that he has done. And, and you'll notice he doesn't say, we're going to tell the stories and we're going to talk about all the great ways that we've been, you know, all the great things that we've done. He's talking about the God, the thing, the God stories, what God has done. And, and, and I want to ask you this question. When you tell these stories to encourage one another, who is the hero in your story? You see, when, when our stories are all about us and personal, they are not as, as helpful or effective in terms of edifying the body and helping us grow. But when God's the hero of the story, we can all relate because we all plug into the same bigger story that's going on. Who is the story in the, in the, who is the hero in the stories that you tell? When God's this, this hero, it's just an incredible way to encourage one another. So number one, tell God's story. Number two, tell the whole story. You see, leaving out the parts where we don't do so well or the hard parts really makes our stories less helpful. And I think we know this. If you see in verse three, it says that we, we share the things that we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from our descendants. We're going to tell them everything. There's no hiding. You see, when we, we learn the most when we're in some of those very difficult circumstances, don't we? And those are the exact stories that we can share to encourage one another, to help one another grow, telling the whole story, the good, the bad, the ugly. I mean, you know the best stories are not just the ones where we say, hey, look, you know, here are some great things that happened and here's what I did well and follow my example. I mean, those stories can sometimes actually be out of reach for us because we say, well, that happened to you, but I can't really relate. But when we tell stories that are, uh, that are God stories and we tell stories that are the complete picture, we can relate to them easier. They're honest. They're, they're, they're stories that we can kind of put ourselves in there and say, you know what, I've done that too. And we can learn from one another. So we need to, uh, number one, tell God's story. Number two, tell the whole story. And number three, tell stories that benefit others. Ephesians 4.29 says that we are to use words to build each other up according to our needs. If you look down at verse 7, it says, um, actually in, in, in not just 7, but in, in, um, in 6 and 7, or 7 and 8, it says that, that they would put their trust in the Lord. This is the point of the story, that they would not forget his deeds, that they would keep his commands, that they would not be like the ancestors who did things in a different way. So all of these, um, uh, these sort of qualifiers are, are sort of the point. Do our stories have a point? You know, I, I love to tell stories, and if I'm honest, you know, I like to tell entertaining stories. I like to tell funny stories, and sometimes stories I like to tell that, you know, kind of make me look good. But the truth is that, that when, we're, when I'm struggling with something, when I'm, you know, working through a decision, I've always loved people who have come alongside me and said, you know, when I was younger, or, you know, in my experience... Listen, you know, my dad has always been incredibly fantastic at this. But could you imagine if we were the kind of storytellers that were always 
thinking about the people who we were sharing those stories with. If we were telling stories to help the next generation grow, not only to make ourselves look good, but to help other people. And this isn't just a young and old kind of thing. If we think about the fact that some of us, sometimes the next generation is the next generation of believers. Maybe you're new in your faith, or maybe, you know, you've been in your faith for a long time, and you can share the great things that God has done to encourage those who are coming behind you. A good story is better than a thousand lectures. When God does something amazing in your life, listen, this is really important. When God does something amazing in your life, share it. Share that story. Look for people who could use a little encouragement. So this morning, we're going to do, uh, we're going to uh, celebrate several baptisms this morning, and we've talked about what baptism is before here at our church. But if this is your first time here, and maybe you might be kind of wondering what's all this about, well, well, baptisms are a public statement. They are part of telling our God stories to other people. They're the opportunity for us to say, I'm a follower of Jesus, and I want to take this step so that others will know exactly what's going on in my life. It's also an opportunity to follow Jesus. Uh, this was his example. He was baptized himself, but it was also his instruction. He said, go and baptize and, and we were called to be baptized after believing. And so this is part of, of, of our story as well. He's given us new life. But the really, really neat thing about baptism, and probably one of the things that is, is most incredible to me, is that baptism itself is a story. Baptism itself is a picture of what God is doing in our lives and what God has done in our lives. In Romans 6, 3 and 4, it says, Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We therefore were buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of God the Father, we too may live a new life. Baptism reminds us that when we come to faith in Jesus Christ, we bury our own life and we are resurrected with him. And we can enjoy a new life that is being redeemed with meaning and purpose and when we can see our story begin to intersect more and more with his story.